I'm Matt Strife from the Landmark location in Red Cloud. I'm Matt Thramer from the Hastings location of Landmark. Um, today we're going to be talking to you about settings and adjustments on your 600F platforms. Back shaft speeds on your flex heads, we want to be running down on the lower end of the range. We want to be running from 490 to 520. Um, so you guys that have variable speed machines, that'll be as slow as it can go. And the guys that have five speed feeder houses, that'll be first gear. Uh, your knife drive gear case, we want to make sure that the knife is properly aligned in this very end guard. Um, a lot of times we'll see where this guard is broke off. To adjust that, you can take this bolt loose and move this down just a little bit to get it to come down very slightly. Um, otherwise, there is a little bit of an adjustment. You can take the bolts loose down here and move that gearbox around just a little bit. Uh, your end points, um, these are all speeding up on these 600 series flex heads. There's a spring back here and then a bolt with a jam nut. You can adjust that to set the proper height for your snoot. Most people when they're cutting beans will want to have this just barely bouncing off the ground. So this one needs to be adjusted down. Your reel, change the bat position, the lever up top, pull the keeper out and you can adjust this forward or backward for the aggressiveness of your fingers on your reel. We want to make sure that we adjust this on both ends. If you try and adjust one end, it's going to be on a bind. Your rear stripper, we want to have that set to about a quarter inch. That way uh, soybeans or wheat don't get tangled up in here and it stops it from coming up and over the auger. Your front and middle strippers, we want to have those adjusted to about a half inch. Uh, we don't want them adjusted too much shorter than that, otherwise your auger will hit on them. Finger timing, we want to make sure there is a sufficient gap here, um, but not too much of a gap so it throws the crop into the feeder house. If you have a small enough gap and those fingers come around, they're going to hit right here and break all of them off in your center section. Um, if, they're not, if they're not out far enough, they're not going to gather all the crop up and you're going to get a buildup of crop right here. To adjust your finger timing, you take these four 12 millimeter bolts loose and put a crescent wrench or socket on the end of your shaft and adjust it backwards or forwards depending on how you need to adjust it. Your real speed sensor right here, uh, we want to make sure we have just a little bit of gap in there. Uh, what I usually tell people is to adjust it down all the way and then back it off one half of a turn and then tighten it up. Your real four and a half position sensor right here, um, every once in a while it'll get thrown out of the groove here and it'll sit on top or on the bottom. You won't be getting an accurate reading. You'll be getting a code. First thing to check is make sure this pin is in this slot right here. For you guys just getting done cutting wheat, uh, we want to make sure we take your lockouts back out, put them in the stored position. Um, guys that are going to do some milo this fall, we want to make sure we put them back in for that so you have a rigid head. Uh, to do that, simply put it underneath the float arm, slide it forward, and secure it with this bolt right here. On the auger flight extensions, if you have a narrow body combine, you'll want to leave them on. And if you have a wide body combine, you'll want to remove them to get the full width of your feeder house. Um, as far as the cutter bar, cutter bar maintenance, or maintenance and setup and adjustment, you're going to want to take and adjust these hold downs down to where you can put pretty much put a business card in between the top of the sickle and the bottom of the hold down and by and you adjust that by using this bolt on the back side of the hold down to adjust, raise it or lower it and it pivots on this bolt these bolt under these bolts one important part when you're setting up your combine is to adjust the cutter bar angle and make sure that the cutter bar is running level with the ground on the cutter bar angle adjustment on these combines it's done with a button inside on your on your handle to adjust the feeder house cutter bar angle. On an older machine or a machine without the hydraulic, you'll have slotted holes and a, and a large bolt at the bottom. You'll have to remove and adjust the angle of that cutter bar to make sure that it's running level with the ground. If you change tire sizes or raise the rear of the machine or anything, you'll have to recheck your cutter bar angle. For those of you who have older 600 series combines, um, 785,000 and below, and are getting a new head, um, your new head will come equipped with a check valve on the head. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the check valve out of your combine and this will be the check valve for the head. So if you have an older corn head, we also need to add one of these check valves to it. If you have any questions, please call your local landmark implement.